Good evening and uh, welcome to the Odyssey and welcome to the latest film in our postcards from Europe strand. We've been away for a while but it's wonderful to be back even if it is only virtually. So tonight's film is a film directed by Italian director Sergio Leone. Many of you will know the westerns that he is celebrated and famous for, um, the so-called spaghetti westerns, um, more about that a little bit later. Um, he started filming westerns in 1964 with the film A Fistful of Dollars. That was a film that got him noticed. It was hugely successful. It was also a film that caused a certain amount of controversy, um, given that it was uh, loosely based on a film by the Japanese director Akira Kurosawa, uh, who wasn't overly pleased to have his film um, remade uh, without his permission. Uh, but that's a story for another time. So tonight's film is the follow-up. It's for a few dollars more, uh, and it was made in 1965. So Leone, um, after the success of Fistful of Dollars, uh, was actually quite reluctant to make yet another Western. Um, he'd obviously uh, garnered a huge amount of recognition from the first film, but what that first film also did was to kind of kickstart um, a mass production, a rush into production of similar kinds of films in Italy. Um, and this ramps up quite quickly. And Leone wanted, I think, to um, retain a certain kind of uh, individuality as a filmmaker, retain a certain sort of distance from um, this label that begins to emerge, uh, this so-called spaghetti western. And that term is one that Leone was um, really not very happy uh, to, to have sort of, um, I suppose, uh, linked with his films. He felt it was actually uh, to reduce the films. Um, so he saw himself as making westerns that were in many ways in the tradition of those sort of celebrated um, American Westerns from the 30s and 40s. Um, but he wanted to do something slightly different, um, wanted to, um, I suppose, you know, make those films um, his own. Anyway, so uh, For A Few Dollars More uh, is uh, a very um, gripping and gritty film. Um, it contains a lot of the kind of features that we tend to associate with Leone. Um, so a lot of the sort of uh, visual aspects of the films are carried over from Fistful, but we also see much of what we see in the later films as well. And I'll come on to those um, in a moment. Just in terms of the film's production, um, it all happened quite quickly. Um, there were some issues with his producers and he ended up um, becoming involved with a new and different producer. Um, and uh, the deal that he did actually was far more kind of um, beneficial for him in terms of, of finance um, and one that uh, allowed him um, a little bit more freedom perhaps than he'd had previously. So Clint Eastwood, um, who'd been in Fistful, was also uh, slotted right from the outset to play a starring role in this film. Uh, so the idea was that he would play the younger of the two bounty hunters. Um, and uh, Eastwood himself uh, was very happy to be involved. I think he'd been paid something like $15,000 for a fistful. For this film, it was 50,000 um, first class flights from the US. And uh, I think he had um, a small percentage of the box office as well. So already, you know, we have that sense of the rising star of Eastwood um, in terms of uh, his uh, star power, his um, star um, potential, I suppose. The other key figure um, in the film is Lee Van Cleef, and um, he becomes involved um, in a rather strange way, actually. So initially, um, Leone had been thinking about um, Peter Fonda uh, and also Charles Bronson, but both of those uh, turned him down. Uh, they do appear, of course, later um, in perhaps his most famous Western, um, Once Upon a Time in the West. So for this film, um, Leone had seen a picture of Van Cleef in um, a kind of Hollywood, um, almost like a catalogue of, of, of actors. Uh, liked the face, thought the face worked, suited um, the kind of idea he had of this particular character. So essentially, armed with this photograph, Leone goes over to Hollywood to try and track Van Cleef down. By the time Leone's looking for him, Van Cleef is barely acting at all. He'd had a very serious car accident a number of years previously, um, and he had 
badly injured, uh, I think, one of his kneecaps, so he couldn't walk easily, um, had a limp, couldn't mount a horse, for example. So actually for him, um, you know, he was struggling to find work um, acting. Anyway, after a fairly sort of uh, uh, lengthy search, um, Leone is able to track Van Cleef down and get him involved in the film. And literally um, one minute Van Cleef is in the States, 24 hours later, he's in Spain uh, and he's starting the shoot um, with Leone. So, um, you know, Van Cleef, a, a fascinating figure, and I think the dynamic between these two is really interesting in this film. Um, there are some wonderful moments, some quite comic that we see in the film, um, which play out between these two characters. And um, I think the, uh, as I said earlier, the kind of, the, the things that we see in the film that are uh, especially Leone-esque, if you like, um, are the, the use of close-ups, um, which uh, Leone is rightly celebrated for. Um, and Christopher Frayling, who is, uh, I suppose, one of the authorities really on the, the Spaghetti Western, um, and who has also written the biography of Leone, called Something to Do with Death, which I thoroughly recommend. It's a fascinating read. It's quite a big book, but uh, if there's anything um, that uh, you want to know about Leona, you're going to find it in there. But essentially, um, Frayling makes a kind of comparison with the films of Eisenstein and the way in which Eisenstein used close-ups of people's faces to create a kind of type and to draw attention to a type. And Leone does that too um, in relation to his figures, his, his characters in his films. But what we also get, which I think works incredibly well in Leone's film, is this sort of um, almost like the extension of, of time. So moments that in a normal Western might play out very swiftly, in Leone's uh, filmmaking, they're kind of drawn out, they're pulled out, and we get every element of detail, um, and we are pulled into, I suppose, um, what is happening, what's going on in the film. Anyway, I'm not sure I want to say too much more really about the film. Um, it's obviously the second of what was a trilogy, what's known as the Dollar Trilogy. Um, and uh, sometimes I think it's the one that gets a little bit forgotten, but it's a, it's a fantastic film and one that I think you will uh, love and enjoy. Um, we do normally have questions when I'm here in person after screenings. Uh, obviously that can't happen this evening. But uh, there is an Odyssey Facebook page, and if you want to raise any issues um, in relation to the film, questions about it, things you've enjoyed, etc., um, I'd be more than happy to, um, to sort of engage with you. Anyway, my name's Paul Sutton, um, and it's been a pleasure to do this little video tonight. Uh, I hope you love the film. Okay, bye.